Wow, that's the original. That's the edited copy. So original edited copy. The length of this arm is completely disproportionate. When you look at the length of the leg, so I'm gonna click on this fella and look at that. The original and the finished version. Hello everyone and welcome to my DxO Viewpoint 4 review and tutorial. If you shoot with a wide angle lens or if you shoot with a fisheye lens, this software is going to be absolutely amazing for you. So this software can be used as a plugin, it can be used in Adobe Photoshop, it can be used in Lightroom Classic and it's also available for DxO Photo Lab 6. Firstly, we have a number of different icons above here. The first one is this fellow, which will mirror your image horizontally. The next one is going to mirror your image vertically, then you have rotate left and rotate right. All reasonably straightforward. You can superimpose a grid which is very handy for getting your verticals right, looking at distortion, things like that. So you can just toggle that on and off. Or you have this really cool filly here too as well. If I click on this, what we can actually do is we can impose our own bars on this. This is the vertical bar and this is the horizontal bar. So if I want to put a vertical bar in here, let's say for looking at the edge of the building here now, I can just click on this, click here, and there's my vertical bar. If I want to put a horizontal bar in there too as well, and I can say, look, what I want is I want a horizontal bar along here. It'll put in my horizontal bar. So then that gives me reference points on the image and I can put another horizontal bar in above and top here, let's say, and put in another vertical bar too as well if I want. You can also change the color of these bars. That, that That's a minor thing, but it is handy and a very odd image. You can see the lines very distinctly. So let's look at distortion now. In distortion, you can do auto or you can do manual. So if I click on manual and I can select what I want, barrel, pin cushion or fisheye. This was shot with a fisheye lens, so we'll say fisheye. So what I'm gonna do is pull this up along until we find a spot where we say, Wow, that looks really good there now. So if we look at the original, that's the original, that's the edited copy. So original edited copy. And you can straight away see how much of a difference that's after making. So that's looking really good. And you can adjust that to whatever way you want. So again, looking at the original, you might say, you know, I kind of like the fish eye look, but I don't like it that much. You can just go in here and you can just pull it back until you say to yourself, yeah, that looks a bit better. Now, my, my, my lines aren't exactly dead straight, but it's better. It's not as bad as it was. Or I can even bring it back here somewhere and say, you know what now? That looks really good. That's exactly what I was looking for. You can also use pincushion here too as well. So you have pincushion and you have barrel. So if you're using a raw file or an original file, you can click on auto and what it'll do is it'll pull all the information from the photograph so it'll know what camera was shot on, what lens was shot on, and it will automatically correct that lens as best as possible for you. This is the second photograph. And again, we have another problem with a wide angle lens here. This was shot with a wide angle lens. And obviously enough, you can see the length of this arm is completely disproportionate. And <laughs> when you look at the length of the leg, when you look at this arm coming out here on the size of the air, and it all just looks completely completely wrong. And this is down to the way a wide angle lens works. The, generally the center of the image or the center of the photograph is going to be correct as regards the size of the image. Everything's going to be in proportion, but the more you get towards the extremities or the outer angle of the lens, the more it's going to stretch that part of the image. So what I'm going to do here is if you have a shot like this and say, oh my God, I actually ruined it. I love the look a wide angle shot gives you here because you can see the whole background or whatever. You say, right, but I need to correct this. How am I going to correct it? What you do is pop it in the viewpoint for. Then we go over here to volume deformation. And when I click on this, there's a few different options. Now I can go for horizontal and vertical, or if I just go for diagonal. So I'm going to click on this fella and look at that. All of a sudden the leg isn't as long, the hand isn't as big, the body isn't as big. Yes, it is still a small bit bigger, but that arm looks a bit more natural. So if I click the original and the finished version just looks better. Yes, we are cropping in a bit and we're losing a certain amount, but just look at the difference between that. Because once you see it, once you see the length of the arm and once you see the length of the leg, you just can't. And this hand here too as well, you just can't unsee it. And again, you have a control here so you can bring that up or down. So you can say, look, right, it's ridiculous here now at the start, but I can pop it up along to 50 and say, hmm, do you know, that's helping. That actually, it's not as noticeable there now, but I can say, right, you know, I want to go a bit more so I can go up to 80 something and you say, yeah, that's looking better now. That is looking better, but it's maybe still not good enough. So we go up along a bit more there now again, and it's getting better. That arm still looks a bit too long, but if I go up, we'll try up around 150. 
and you say, wow, now that looks a lot better. So there or there. So again, if you're shooting a lot with ultra wide angle lenses or wide angle lenses, this is going to be a massive advantage to you. So that's the diagonal deformation tool. Then you have the horizontal and vertical, which is practically the same thing again, only you can adjust it horizontally and vertically. So you can adjust both then yourself. If you found the diagonal tool didn't work perfectly for you, you can bring it into this and you can adjust both of these here then. So this is our next photograph. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this in perspective. So if we want to straighten this building, so you can see it's actually falling backwards or it looks like it's falling backwards in the photograph here because the shot was angled up so we could capture the whole building from the ground up. So what we're gonna do here now is we're gonna go into perspective and switch it on. Uh, if you're again shooting with an original raw file, you can actually click on auto and see how your, see how your settings work out there. But if I click on perspective here now, it is automatically adjusting the edge of the building. So that's one edge of the building and the other edge of the building it's after putting the center point. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move that over here. So I'm just gonna grab that and drop it anywhere there. Yeah, and the next one then I'm gonna go, let me drop that down there. There we go. So what we're gonna do here now is just click at that again to bring that off and we are going to adjust that then. Um, that's getting close, that's getting close. So we're up, how close are we? It's too far, that looks really close. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna switch on the grid here so I can actually see my grid and see how close I am. Horizontals are off too as well, I'd say. So we'll say that's roughly around right there now. And what we can do then is because of the fact we're actually overshooting the building completely there now, we can just go to our horizontal vertical ratio and pull that back down along and give it a couple of seconds. And that is now going to bring the building it's going to bring it back so we can actually see the whole building in one shot. Now, I'm just going to double check that now because the other thing we need to do here now is adjust our angle here in our horizon. That looks really close there now. So if I switch the grid off there now again, boom. There we have it. So now our photograph does look better. It actually looks like it's leaning out now for action. So I'm actually, it's a 94. I'm just going to tweak that back because yeah, sometimes while it might be correct, it still doesn't look right. So there we go. That looks better to me there now. That's the thing you have to actually, what I find personally is you have, to, you have to look away from it for a couple of seconds and then go back along again and keep keep checking it. So maybe around 90 there now. That looks good enough to me there now. So I actually just went playing with that another small bit there now again and I actually much prefer that there now. That I like the fact that the building is still sloping back a small little bit on both sides and it's nearly touching top of the frame. So this is the edited version and that's the original. So edited version and original. So you can see what a difference it makes using the perspective tool here. It, it it absolutely does make a huge difference. So we're going to go to reshape here now and reshape is going to be incredibly handy. So what it does is you can see there's a grid overlay here now and there's four rows and four columns. I can go eight by eight. I can go by 16 by 16 or 32 by 32. But let's say if I go by four by four here now, I'm looking over here. The Baltimore beacon is definitely leaning out over towards the top left. Now it could well happen that you have something else here that is dead straight. Now if we adjust our perspective vertically, what that's going to do is it's going to make this crooked and it's going to make that straight. So sometimes depending what you're shooting, it's handy just to be able to pull the image off. So this is a bit like the liquify tool, but if I grab this point and just pull this down, right, and then grab the top point above here and bring this over, I'm doing this really quickly now. So I can just say, there we go. And if I go off screen, Hey, there's my Baltimore beacon, more or less. I'll just pull that back a small bit. More or less level there now. That looks a lot better all of a sudden. And I literally did that in a couple of seconds. Or you can say, look, what I want to do is I want to drag this out long because I want to make this a bit bigger. And I'm going to drag this here then too as well. So you can actually transform how big the cliff face is there. If you wanted to add a bit more oomph into the image or even bring it here now too as well again and bring this over a bit. And there we go. And if I go off image there now, you wouldn't know I'd actually distorted that and pulled that. And I did that so, so quickly. So that is incredibly handy. The reshape tool is very, very, very handy in this. And again, there's four by four columns on there now. You can go eight by eight, or you can go 16 by 16 too as well if you want. Next, we have the horizon tool. And if I adjust this, it's gonna adjust the tilt in our horizon. And I can bring it back or I can use the keys too as well. The keys will give you far, far, far smoother and far more gentle 
control. You can go plus one, plus point one of a time or minus point one at a time. That is going to give you incredible control. So um, we could say, look, that's exactly what I want. And again, if those lines are getting in your way, you can just go to the lines and switch them off above here. So the next thing we want to do here now is crop our image. So if I switch on crop here now, I can leave auto on and it's going to automatically crop the image for you. Or you can click here and you can crop it manually yourself. But as you can see, has done a very good job. Now I could just maybe pull up a small bit more because we are losing a tiny little bit. Um, so there we go. That's looking a bit better. I could actually even go a small bit more again. So we're not, yeah, it's just catching on top. And if I click on apply, that should be it, is it? Looks like it. So yeah, so that is our cropping done. Miniature effect and uh, I've got onto this for that. That is, uh, yeah, that's something people, you, you either love or you hate. You really either love it or you hate it. So um, what we can do is we can adjust the symmetric position here too as well. So I can adjust the feathering and how far in and how far out of frame the miniature effect is going to kick in. I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this because this is something I'm just, I'm just purely not going to use myself personally. So that, that is an incredibly fast run through of how viewpoint four works. Works. And it does a really good job at correcting distortion. It does a really good job at cropping and correcting your horizons. But the reshape tool is one of the handiest things out there. I think that is absolutely fantastic. Don't forget to check out my DxO Photo Lab 6 video. And um, thanks for watching, everyone. And see you out there.